Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 6, Romans chapter 8 verse 3, and Hebrews chapter 8 verse 8. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Lord God for your word. Thank you for planting it deeply into our hearts and letting it be in good ground. Lord Jesus, I pray for all of our brothers and sisters out there who are in the battle. Lord God, help them, strengthen them, be a shield around them, place special angels around them so that they can go through and get to where you want them to be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Nehemiah chapter two, verse six. And the king said to me, the queen sitting beside him, how long will you be gone? And when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me when I had given him a time. All right. And so this is um, a reflection of just the fact that we are sent out on an assignment, right? We go away from the king to build up the wall, right? And what does that mean? That means that we're going away from the king to build up the kingdom, right? And so we may have a job, in the body of Christ. Everyone may have a job, right? You may be the best, best, I'm sorry, a Sunday school teacher, you know, or, or you may be the best usher, or you may be the best child care technician, but you know what? God still wants his kingdom to be built up, right? And you can build up his kingdom um, in the jobs that you do and, and helping contribute within that job. But sometimes God send us on special assignments. Sometimes God send us into places that we aren't used to, right? Outside of our comfort zone, right? He was used to tasting the, the king's cup. He was used to handing the king that cup right? And being beside the king at all times. And so, you know, now he was going into a whole nother arena of wall building, right? He he probably had no idea how to build, not just a wall like in your yard. We're talking about the wall that protects the city, right? So these are huge stones. They have to be quarried. They have to be cut. They have to be place properly they have to not compromise the rest of the wall right and so you know he had to leave his comfort zone to go build up the kingdom and that's what we have to do as well we need to tell people about christ we need to be on assignment going out and doing the will of the father we may not actually understand how to do that, right? But we can put our trust in God that he knows how to do it and he's going to give us the revelation that we need to do it. We need to work by love, right? Faith worketh by love and we need to go out into all the world and preach the good news, right? And so the second verse is Romans chapter eight, verse three. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. And so, you know, Christ did it, right? Christ did what we couldn't do, right? God gave us the law to help us show us to, to help us know what was right from wrong, right? When, when our ox kicks somebody, you know, you got to restore that person. You got to pay for the damages, the loss, right? So God showed us all these things in the law. He showed us how to love our neighbor. He showed us how to love him. He showed us how to present offerings and sacrifices. But it says, for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. So when the law encountered our flesh, it began to decay at the relationship. Why? Because people started following the law as best they could and they weren't doing a good job at it. And they forgot about God, right? They they forgot all about the, the love. They forgot about the relationship. They forgot about the God that they served was the God of the universe. And they were treating him like 
any old thing, right? Going through the rituals, but not loving God. We have to make sure that we never forget God. We never forget that relationship that we want to share, that we, that we, you know, felt so much in the beginning, right? We need to seek his face and we need to, um, come out of that flesh state, right? And and be about relationship with God. And so, you know, it says, for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. So he went through it as a human being. He went through it the same way we would go through it, right? And it says, and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. So that was his purpose for coming was for sin. God loved us so much that he sent his son. And so here, you know, it it was, it was a, a wonderful gift that he gave us, right? And so let's look back at that first verse. So when we are out on assignment, we're not out on assignment just to build the wall, right? When you're building a wall, you're you're keeping something out, right? And as we as we tell people about the kingdom of God, as we tell people about Christ and and their souls are one, um, they come behind the wall, right? They they build up their wall. Right now they're in a state of bondage. Right now they're in a state of lost, of being lost and, and, and being away from God, right? Everyone is walking around with chains on, even though the way out has been made, right? We need to, just like someone told us about Christ, we need to go out and tell someone about Christ, right? We need to go out and win souls for the kingdom. And so the way that we do at that, we need to realize that, you know, you have to come out of your comfort zone, just like Nehemiah. You have to leave the, the shelter of lack of offense, right? Of offending people or not offending people or, or being embarrassed or, or being cut off or being rejected, right? Get that rejection out of the way. Go ahead. It's like falling off a bike, right? We have to just fall off. We cannot be worried about whether or not a person will reject us or not. We have to do it anyway, right? We have to walk through that fire and know that, hey, my God's got me, right? It's better for me to have told them of the kingdom and and possibly snatch them from the fire rather than not said anything and allowed them to go to the fire, right? And you don't know, when you tell people about Christ, sometimes they can bring their whole family with them. Why? Because you're not just speaking um, about their wall. You're speaking about the walls that are around them, right? And so as you spread the gospel, they can go forth and spread the gospel. And that is a heavenly bank account, right? Because we are building up the kingdom one person at a time. And so that one person may they know every right thing to say already to their mother, their father, their children, their wife, whatever, right? And so um, that is how we build up the kingdom. We come out of our comfort zone and look, Christ has already done the heavy lifting. It says, for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemns sin in the flesh. So they are set free the moment they say yes to it, right? God did all the work, the heavy lifting of eternal life. And so all they have to do is accept him, right? All they have to do is say yes to Christ. All right, let's look down at the third verse, Hebrews chapter eight, verse eight. For he finds fault with them when he says, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. All right. And so um, here, you know, it says that he found fault with them. Right. And, and yes, they were sinning. 
They, they were not continuing in the covenant of God. They were not continuing in the ways of God, right? But God wanted to help them in this thing. He wanted to help them. He knew that they were still going to have to say yes, but he wanted to help them as it relates to stumbling and falling, right? And falling away and and not, not atoning properly and not being able to enter into his presence. All the promises that we have with this new covenant, he wanted to help us with that. And so he's talking about the children of Israel here, but we can claim these promises as well. It says, for he finds fault with them when he says, behold, the days are coming declares the Lord, when I will establish my new covenant with the house of Israel. What is that new covenant? That new covenant is Christ Jesus dying on the cross, atoning for all of our sins and being that perfect sacrifice for us forevermore. Amen. It says, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. God has planned for great and small. Remember the end of this section, it talks about God um, remembering our sins no more, right? It doesn't mean that we never sin. It doesn't mean that, you know, all those things that were done um, weren't done. No, he's going to cover it. He covers it with his righteousness, with his blood, right? We can't be so far from God that we forget about all that he has saved us from. Tell other people about Christ, even if at the risk of being labeled as a, a proselytizer or whatever, or a evangelist or a people making fun, it doesn't matter. That makes the reward even greater. Amen. All right, you guys go out and get them. <laughs> all right. Let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for your love that you share with us day by day, moment by moment, hour by hour. Lord God, help us to have strength to evangelize in this world. Help us to have courage. Put a boldness through your Holy Spirit and through revelation of, of, of the keys, Lord God, and how to do it and how to operate and through your Holy Spirit and, and just in your great power, Lord God. Give us that revelation that we need, Lord God. Give us the love in our hearts for you and for your people, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We know that faith worketh by love, Lord. Help us to have that love. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.